bifocals that actually work now but the print on my bible is so big blind person can see it so i told my wife this morning as we were getting ready for church i can probably get a smaller bible to carry with me now which would be handy for efc instead of carrying what seems like a log around with me i can carry one that's just well you know normal size you don't have to see it from the next county 
Amen. Revelation, the 12th chapter, we're going to pick up in the ninth verse. Um, yeah, well, it'll speak for itself, and it's very familiar to most here. And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil, and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world. He was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. And I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, Now has come salvation and strength and the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ. For the accuser of our brethren is cast down, which accused them before our God day and night. And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. And they loved not their lives unto death. Therefore rejoice ye heavens and ye that dwell in them. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea. For the devil is coming down unto you, having great wrath, because he knoweth that he hath but a short time. And when the dragon saw that he was cast unto the earth, he persecuted the woman which brought forth the man-child. And to the woman were given two wings of a great eagle, that she might fly into the wilderness into her place where she is nourished for a time and times and a half time from the face of the serpent. And the serpent cast out of his mouth water as a flood after the woman that he might cause her to be carried away of the flood. And the earth helped the woman and the earth opened up her mouth, opened her mouth and swallowed up the flood which the dragon cast out of his mouth. And the dragon was wroth with the woman and went to make war with the remnant of her seed which keep the commandments of God and have the testimony of Jesus Christ. Uh, I have told you guys so many times before uh, how, how many different churches I have come out of, but the, the common doctrine now that you find in churchianity, they, they say that uh, the, the Christian dispensation has nothing to do with the commandments of God, but the, the commandments of God are not important for you to know, let alone keep. But the Old Testament, it is not something that matters. And before anybody gets concerned, we are not going in the direction that we went last week. I want to stand up here and give you some good news. But I'll tell you honestly, sometimes, especially in this time that we live in, it's harder to find good news. So if you're going to preach the, the good news in our time, it's got to be the gospel. Yeah, because yeah. that's the only yeah. good news I can tell you. Yeah. The economy's going downhill. The presidential election's trying to turn into a war. We got a maniac in Washington. But the news is still good yeah. because we've got the King of Kings yeah. that is coming. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. But the dragon is going to war against those that keep the commandments. Yes. Amen. Well, that's okay. That just wrote off half of churchianity. Okay, that just wrote off 90% of churchianity. <laughs> You're right. I, I had to fix that one because that seriously is the truth. They don't know his commandments. They don't keep his commandments. They don't understand his law. They have no desire to know his law. But how can you know what sin is if you don't know the law? Because in the book of 1 John, John tells us that sin is the transgression of the law. Mm -hmm. That gives me a problem. Because if there's no law for us to base what is sin off of, how do we know what we can and can't do? Yeah. That's a problem. But he's going to war against us because we know the commandments and we keep the commandments. Hence the reason why we are here on his day. Uh, somebody, uh, you know what, Let, let's do it more organized than just hollering for somebody. Give me John 14 and 21. Uh, Jonathan, go get me Galatians 4 and 9 and hold on to that. Aubrey, get me Daniel, the 11th chapter, 32 through 35. But John 14 and 21. He that hath my commandments and keepeth them, hmm. 
He it is that loveth me, and he that loveth me shall be loved of my Father, and I will love him, and will manifest myself to him. And will manifest myself to him. Who is it that he is going to manifest himself to? The one that has his commandments and keep them. Those that have his commandments and keep them. He is going to manifest himself. He is going to show himself who he really is. He's going to open their eyes and they will understand. Now, uh, Daniel, I want uh, go ahead and read King James first. <coughs> what? what uh, 32 through 35. What chapter? The 11th chapter. Okay. Some of us are listening, others aren't. Daniel, the 11th chapter, 32 through 35. I got the SD. Okay. And such as violate the covenant, he shall pervert and seduce with flatteries. But the people who know their God shall prove themselves strong and shall stand firm and okay. do exploits for God. Now, I, I can tell you, we used to have a 15-minute broadcast on FM radio, and they used to love to put me up behind to preach because I talked so fast. It was like an auctioneer, and I could fit 45 minutes to an hour in that 15-minute period. But please slow down just a little bit so everybody can hear. Uh, King James is fine. ESV is fine. Go ahead. And such do wickedly against the covenant shall he corrupt by flatteries. But the people that do know their God shall be strong and do exploits. The people that do know their God. Now according to what Jesus just said in John, who is it that's going to know their God? Those that have and keep his commandments. Because we've got a whole, I won't say generation, because it has been this way since the Council of Nicaea around 325 A.D. that the church has no idea what the commandments of God are. It, it's make sure you show up on Christmas and Easter and Sunday and you're saved. Yeah. That's not the commandments of God. No. We show up, well, with Leviticus, the 23rd chapter. What day is the holy convocation? Sabbath. The Sabbath day. The Amen. seventh day Sabbath. That's why we meet here, because we understand that he came to fulfill the law, sure. But he made it a hundred times harder because he showed us not how to circumvent the law, but what it really meant to keep the law. Yeah. Jesus in the fifth chapter of the book of Matthew said that if a man look upon a woman to lust after her, then he's already committed adultery in his heart. That makes it a lot harder than just don't commit adultery. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's the thought and the intent of your heart. Yeah. Somebody get me Hebrews 4 and 12. You're not through reading. It's okay. Stay there, camp out. For the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit and of the joints and marrow, and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. Yeah. Jesus came along and he made it harder because it's not just what you do, it's what is in your heart yes. when you do it. Are you doing it because you love him? If you love me, keep my commandments. Do you want to know who your God is? Are you wanting to draw closer to your God? Amen. Then keep his commandments. Yes. Amen. Yes. And if you know him, because they that know their God shall what? Do exploits. Do exploits. Do exploits. Keep reading. And they that understand among the people shall instruct many. Yet they shall fall by the sword and by flame, by captivity okay. and by soil many days. Hold on right there. They know their God. They understand righteousness. Yeah. They understand what sin is. They understand what sin isn't. 
Because they know what this book really means. Yeah. That they understand and they are going to instruct others. Why is it in that period of time others will listen then because they won't listen now? Because when you see everything being fulfilled in front of your face, even if it scares you half to death, it's going to bump your faith up a little bit. Amen. I promise you, it's going to bump your faith up a little bit. Amen. When you see these things coming to pass, yes. when you see the man of sin revealed, whoa, mm -hmm. that's in the Bible. <laughs> yes. Amen. It's what Brother Jackie was talking about before church started, that, that uh, asteroid or whatever it is, 2029, I, I've heard some different dates, but it's still it's the same rock. But you know, when that thing splashes down in the ocean, um, well, you, you know, the, the Bible kind of said that was going to yep. going to happen. Amen. Yep. Don't wait till it's too late to repent. Amen. Don't wait till it's too late to turn to God. We are living in the scariest, most glorious time Amen. that there has ever been on the planet. Because this planet is a spent cartridge. It's already been fired. The gunpowder's already went bluey. Amen. In and of itself, it is crashing. But there's a king that is coming. And we look for new heavens and a new earth wherein dwelleth righteousness. Amen. Well, hey, that's interesting. How do we know it's righteous if there's no law? Sorry, couldn't help. <laughs> okay, so the people that know their God, so we know we have to keep his commandments. Now, I gave you Galatians 4 and 9. Yep. You know, there's lots of Bibles and lots of phones. I don't understand them. For now, after that ye have known God, or rather are known of God. Or rather are known of God. He will manifest himself to you when you start doing what his word tells you to do. Amen. Hallelujah. Go ahead and finish it. How turn ye again to the weak and beggarly elements, whereunto ye desire again to be in bondage? <laughs> now for years... That has been preached, and I did not mean to go down this rabbit hole. I had forgot about that part being part of the verse. For years, that has been preached saying, you guys keeping the command, that, that's weak and beggarly. Paul said that's weak and beggarly. Paul's talking to Gentiles, or at least they were Gentiles. They never kept the law before they knew Jesus Christ. They, they, they weren't keeping the Sabbath. They weren't keeping Passover. They weren't keeping any of the feast days because they were our ancestors. They, they were pagans. That's the reason why most of our society consists of paganism because that's where we came from. But he's saying, you've known this way. You are known of God. Why are you turning back to celebrate Baal? Why are you turning back to celebrate Nimrod? Why are you turning back and celebrating these heathen holidays that God brought you out of? Amen. 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 It's good news. It's good news because he has called us into this. Uh, go ahead, read Amplified. Daniel 11, 32 through 35. Sweetheart, I'm going to have to buy you a different Bible program if it's that difficult. As such as violate the covenant, he shall pervert and seduce with flatteries. But the people who know their God shall prove themselves strong and shall stand firm and do exploits. And they who are wise and understanding among people shall instruct many and make them understand. But something's going to happen. Go ahead. Though some of them and their followers shall fall by the sword and flame by captivity and plunder for They're many days. They're going to die. Some of them are going to die. How can that possibly be good news? Go ahead. Now when they fall, they shall, they shall receive a little help. Many shall join themselves to them with flatteries and hypocrisies. And some of those who are wise, prudent, and understanding shall be weakened and fall. 
Thus then the insincere among the people will lose courage and become deserters. It will be a test to refine, to purify, and to make those among God's people white, even to the time of the end, because it is yet for the time God appointed. In, in a time of trial, in, in a time when crisis is upon the face of the earth, the, the dross, because of the flame, will come to the top of the pot. That's what Daniel was talking about. There's going to be a lot of them. I mean, they're going to leave. The church is going to be refined. The church is going to be purified. And I do not know what they believe, but it reminds me of something I heard came out of Nazi Germany when they were underground and they were having a church meeting and worshiping God. And all of a sudden, this SS officer walks into the middle of them, cocks his gun and says, if you want to leave, leave now getting up left and right, shooting out of there, getting, getting going home, saving their own lives. After they're left, he discharged his weapon, put it back in the holster, sat down, said, brother, now we can have church. <laughs> <laughs> it has a way of separating those that are sincere yeah. from those that aren't sincere. Amen. That's what, what, when you come in here, we've got nothing glorious to give you. My wife's lasagna is kind of glorious. That, that's her day. But I mean, there's nothing glorious about here. You're not going to get some great reputation coming here. But you get God. Amen. Amen. And that is glorious, just Amen. not to this world. Amen. This world couldn't care less. Amen. But you'll get him. You'll run into him here. I promise you that. Romans, the eighth chapter. Okay, Josiah, have I given you anything at all? I gave you I the scripture so. that I didn't even have you read, didn't I? I read. You did? Okay. Wow, talk about short-term memory yeah. loss. Uh, Josiah, go get me Mark. Yes, sir. The 10th chapter. Yes, sir. Uh, Justin, get me Matthew, the 10th chapter. Jonathan, go get me Revelation, the 2nd chapter. I'll get to you in a minute. Romans, the 8th chapter, 28th verse. <laughs> this is one of my favorite little sayings when the day is going bad and somebody asks me how it's going and I'll say, well, it's a Romans 8 and 28 kind of day. Yeah. And we know that all things work together for good. <laughs> to them that love God. Yeah. To them who are the called according to his purpose. For whom he did foreknow, he also did predestinate to be conformed. You, you know uh, that they have what they call casting. When they'll go out and maybe they're making an axe head or something. And it, it's something that they're going to pour the metal into a cast and then grind it down. That metal's not comfortable when it's being conformed to the image of an axe head. The Liberty Bell, it was something, it was melted down and they had this form that they poured all the metal into and everything. And it's not comfortable when it's getting poured. It's not comfortable. But if you are going to be conformed yeah. to the image of his son, sometimes it is not comfortable. But for the benefits that are coming. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. The benefits that are coming, this world cannot offer you anything. Now let's read a little more what Paul said here. For whom he did foreknow, he also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of his Son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. Moreover, whom he did predestinate, them he also called. And whom he called, them he also justified. And whom he justified, them he also glorified. What shall we say then to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? Now think about this in the flesh as we read. He that spared not his own son, but delivered him up for us all, how shall he not with him give him also freely us all things? I think I butchered that. But delivered him up for us all, how shall he not with him also freely give us all things? Who shall lay anything to the charge of God's elect? It is God that justifies. Yes. Amen. 
Who is he that condemneth? It is Christ that died. Yea, rather, that is risen again. Who even at the, who is even at the right hand of God, who also maketh intercession for us, who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Think about this. Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword. You know that all, that all sounds really bad, but hey, we get out with our lives, right? As it is written, for thy sake we are killed all day long. How is that possibly good news? <laughs> Think about it in the flesh for a minute. Yeah. We're all going to die. Well, yeah, you know, sooner or later we are. Yeah. That, that's just the way it is. You are going to die. Somewhere around the age of 20 years old, all of a sudden your cells start walking around on a walker and they're <laughs> starting to bump around and they're going blind. It just happens. Yeah. You're dying a lot longer than you was living. That's just the way anatomy works. That's the way your body works. How is this possibly good news that we are slain like sheep for his sake? Amen. Mark, 10th chapter, 28 through 31. <clears throat> then Peter began to say unto him, Lo, we have left all and have followed thee. Mm -hmm. And Jesus answered and said, Verily I say unto you, There is no man that hath left house, or brethren, or sisters, or father, or mother, or wife, or children, or lands for my sake and the gospels, but he shall receive an hundredfold now in this time. Okay, hold that. Now in this time. I'll tell you honestly, five years ago, I didn't have any friends. That's just the way it was. Most people at that point, they were separating themselves from me, getting as far as they could, and that group of people is still getting just as far away as they can from us. But then God brought us into a circulation, into a circle of another people. And these people started, it's like, my goodness, I can't get a minute's peace. <laughs> Praise God for them. Yes. I mean, it is great. He lives up to his promise, but you're going to receive those things with persecutions. Yes. Yes. But let's hear the rest of it. But he shall receive a hundredfold now in this time uh -huh. houses and brethren and sisters and mothers and oh, children yeah. and lands with persecution yes. and in the world to come eternal life. That's what's missing so much. You are not going to live forever in your current form. It doesn't happen. It's not going to work that way. Your body's shutting down. All these things happen. I, I've got one of those weird diseases where my eyes, as my cells are going someplace to die, they float in and they come into my eyes in what's called drusen, and they get right there in the center of my pupils. It doesn't matter. It does not matter because Amen. I don't need them that long. Amen. He's going to get me a glorified body, Amen. and I won't have to worry about it. Amen. Amen. And the way this world's going, I don't think I'll live long enough to be totally blind anyway. <laughs> but I know he's going to resurrect us. Amen. It's Amen. not just me. You serve him. You keep his commandments. Amen. You do Amen. for God what he requires. Devil, it don't matter what you throw at me. Amen. Hallelujah. Take it. He'll give it back. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Read Job. Yeah. The only thing Satan could do to Job is what God gave him permission. And Amen. then God says, yeah, you like that? Here. Mm -hmm. He left with a bucket, came back with a wheelbarrow. I mean, he, <laughs> he gave him so much more yeah. on the backside. Amen. Thank you. Amen. Because it's his to give. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Hallelujah. The trials that come upon us do not matter. Oh, it stinks when it's going on. Oh, yeah. It stinks when it's going on. Amen. But you know, it's kind of like when you're pregnant and you got morning sickness real bad. You know what? When that child is delivered and the pain's over, you forget all about that morning yeah. sickness. Yeah. It's all over. It, it's all gone because now you got a baby. 
Now you're too busy changing diapers to think anything about it. <laughs> the blessing comes and the trial is forgotten. Yes. Yes. Yes, that's true. Only as a testimony. Yes. Go ahead and finish that. But many that are first shall be last, and the last first. Okay. Um, 32? Uh, 31. Okay. Matthew 10, 37 through 39. He that loveth father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. And he that loveth son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. And he that taketh not his cross and followeth after me is not worthy of me. He that findeth his life shall lose it, and he that loseth his life for my sake shall find it. The first person I ever heard say this was Bishop White. I'm pretty sure it's been said before because it's just too catchy in 2,000 years to not have appeared. But Bishop White said that it's hard to live for God easy. But it's easy to live for God hard. When you jump in with both feet, it's easy to walk for God. It's easy to live for God when He is your focus. But when you're trying to take all this stuff out here in the world and you're trying to make time for God, it's almost impossible. Because this world will suck all the time out of you that you could possibly have. But if you throw yourself into it, that's what I have tried to get across before to different people that, well, I, you know, I, I tried it and it didn't work. Well, did you really try it? Yeah. He's not a liar. Yeah. He's not a liar. He said, hey, hey, devil takes it, I'll give it back. Amen. He's not a liar, but you've got to be all in for him to be all in. Amen. You want a little bit of a blessing? You want a great big blessing? Amen. Now, I'm not talking about money. We don't have a plate to pass. <laughs> I'm just talking about your life. I, I don't care about your money. I want to see what you're going to do with God. Yes. Amen. So he says, uh, back to verse 35, I gave you revelation, right? Okay. Uh, you know, this one's almost an insult to you, Aubrey, so I'll give you Isaiah 45. I'll, I'll give that one to you. Yeah. Carrie, you can recite Hebrews 11 and 6, but hold on to it. So we're going to pick back up here. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution I've had tribulation, I've had distress, I've had persecution. Famine, no, not so much. Uh, nakedness, thankfully no. <laughs> or peril, or sword, as it is written, for thy sake we are killed all the day long. We are accounted as sheep for the slaughter. Nay, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. We just got to get through. Amen. Can you imagine the glory in the kingdom that's yes. coming? Amen. Yes. Amen. Amen. Your testimony that got you there is just going to build your faith. But it's just a testimony. Yes. Amen. After a thousand years time, Satan is loosed for a little season to go out. And if they want to be fooled, they can be fooled. And then after that, he's gone. And he's gone for good. Yes. Ha, Satan. The adversary. He's gone. There'll be no more of it. Pass the test. Pass the test. I'm telling you right now, this is a test you want to study for. Yes. This is a test you want to throw yourself into and study for. But it is worth throwing yourself yes. into. This pays out better than anything the world is going to give you. Yes. Amen. <clears throat> Amen. For the wages of sin is death. Nay, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. For I am persuaded that neither death, there it is again, neither death, what, what part of death don't you get? Isn't that the end? Neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love 
of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. Peter walked with him for his ministry on earth. And then Peter turned around on the day that he was crucified and he uh, denied him. You know, uh, especially when the dead guy gets up out of the ground, I, I think I would be having some odd feelings there thinking, you know, maybe I'm just not worthy of all this. Mm -hmm. it, it's not, Lord, you don't know what I've done. No, God, you know what I did. Jesus took him right back. Amen. There was no hesitation to it. He said, yes, you're right. You did mess up. And then you read later on in John where Jesus is kind of poking in the ribs. You love me? Deny me three times. Do you love me? Do you love me? Do you love me? He forgave him. And he used him. And I, I read in ancient literature that they talk about him being the prince of the apostles. I don't know if that was true or not. I know Jesus gave him the keys to the kingdom. I, I do know that happened. But he fell. And Amen. God didn't just kick him to the curb. God picked him back up. Amen. Amen. Brushed him off. A few days later, filled him so full of the Holy Ghost. Amen. They're Amen. out there crucified upside down. I'm not worthy to be uh, crucified as my Lord. That's tradition, not Bible, but... He gave him something. He gave him something. Revelation, second chapter, give me verses 10 and 11. Fear none of those things which thou shalt suffer. Behold, the devil shall cast some of you into prison, that ye may be tried, and ye shall have tribulation ten days. Amen. Be thou faithful unto death, and I will give thee a crown of life. Yeah. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. He that overcometh shall not be hurt of the second death. It's wild. You read some of the things in, in history and tradition and these different things that happened in the period in between the resurrection and from when uh, Constantine legalized Christianity. You read about these like soldiers being so impressed with the faith of the believers that were being murdered by the wicked emperors that they would jump in and become believers and die right there on the spot because they were so overcome by what they were seeing. We're all so wrapped up in what is going on right now. We're so wrapped up in this life and making sure this goes this way and this goes that way. And you know, I, I still, no, actually, you know, I don't have a 401k now, but I'm still, I mean, I've got a plan for retirement even though I have no doubt that it's not going to be there, because neither will I. But we've got to keep our priorities straight and our focus on Him. We've got to understand what the early church understood. Yeah, go ahead and kill me. I'm not going to stay that way. Mm -hmm. I'm going to die, but, you know, it's not forever. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> we, we've got to get this mentality out of our minds that I've, I've, I've got to do me, me, me first. I've, I've got to do everything I possibly can to, to stay afloat, to stay alive. And I, I don't know, you know, at some point I might end up living under a bridge. I've almost got the troll thing going on anyway. Maybe I can start charging tolls. I don't know. But <laughs> the world's getting nasty. They're getting nasty against believers. You don't believe me? Sign into Facebook and say that you stand for Jesus Christ and you better keep his commandments. If you don't, you don't love him. I dare you. You'll find out how nasty these people that are even your friends are. I learned that. Yeah, yeah, I learned that too. I, I think I said this last week. It was a, a comic, you know, uh, Calvin and Hobbes. Mm -hmm. I had made mention something about God on Calvin and Hobbes. And it was like people coming out of the woodwork. <laughs> Goblins. <laughs> <laughs> They're demon possessed. Mm -hmm. This generation is nuts. Okay, you don't like what I believe. I don't like what you believe, but I'm not attacking you. 
but they can't let it go because their father, the devil, just keeps goading them and goading them and goading them. Amen. Let's go to Psalms, ninth chapter. We're just about through. We're going to pick up in the sixth verse. O thou enemy, destructions are come to a perpetual end. And thou hast destroyed cities. Their memorial is perished with them. But the Lord shall endure forever. Amen. He hath prepared his throne for judgment. David saying, you're in trouble. <laughs> and he shall judge the world in righteousness. Revelation bears witness when it says the sea gave up its dead. Death and hell gave up its dead. You might be dead so long you've blown into dust and you're in a billion different places. He's going to bring that dust back together Amen. because there is a judgment coming and you are either on his side. There is no other side. You're just wrong. Mm -hmm. Amen. I lost my place. And he shall judge the world in righteousness. He shall minister judgment to the people in uprightness. The Lord also will be a refuge for the oppressed, a refuge in time of trouble. And they that know the, thy name will put their trust in thee, for thou, Lord, hast not forsaken them. Sing praises to the Lord which dwelleth in Zion, declare among the people his doings. When he maketh inquisition for blood, he remembereth them. He forgetteth not the cry of the humble. Amen. Hebrews 11 and 6, Gary. For without faith it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. In stereo. <laughs> if you seek him diligently David says daily if you seek him he will not cease to reward you it might not be dollars in your bank account he will reward you in ways that you just can't imagine. I, I've gone through trials before where the, the reward was just the grace he gave me to get through the situation. Yeah. Because there are times that everybody gets in the flesh. There are times that everybody's like, oh, I just can't take this anymore. But he giveth grace, yeah. especially to the humble. Yes. Amen. And I'm more humble than you are. Yeah. <laughs> humble than you say. Yeah. <laughs> Isaiah 45th chapter. Give me verses 20 through 23. Assemble yourselves and come. Draw near together, ye that are escaped of the nations. They have no knowledge that set up the wood of the graven Im image. And pray unto a God that cannot save. Yeah. Tell ye and bring them near. Yea, let them take counsel together. Who hath declared this from the from ancient times, who hath told it from that time, that not I have not I the Lord, and there is no God else beside me, a just God and a Savior, there is none beside me. Look unto me, and be ye saved, all the ends of the earth, for I am God, and there is none else. Amen. Look unto Hallelujah. me, not me. Amen. Big M. Amen. Look unto that me, and be ye saved. It's the only salvation you're going to get. Yeah. It comes from him. Mm 